Let's talk about PCB clutter. You've probably experienced it at some point in your life. Here on Chalk Talk, we have talked a lot over the years about how we can make room in our PCB layout. But there is one way to decrease PCB clutter that we have not talked about until now by assembling components on the backside of the board. Now, this won't work for just any component, but we're not talking about just any component today. We're talking about analog devices, micro module regulators. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Jonas Salami from Analog Devices and I explore the benefits and restrictions of analog devices, micro module regulators. We examine how these micromodule regulators can declutter PCB area and increase the system performance of your next design and the variety of options that analog devices offers within their ultra-thin micromodule regulator product portfolio. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. Hi, Jonas. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about micromodule regulators today. But first off, what do you think are the biggest benefits when it comes to these kind of regulators? DC-DC regulators, which are used to supply voltage to various analog or digital ICs, occupy a considerable real estate on the PCBs in today's electronic systems. These micromodules are the easiest way to unclutter the PCB area and increase the system performance. These are DC-DC regulators with the controller, IC, and power MOSFETs, inductors, and capacitors, and other supporting components like resistors and diodes, depending on the technology, in, in elaborate and small packages. Analog devices, micromodule power products with small and low profile packages provide efficient, reliable power density DC-DC power supplies for various applications. These performance are guaranteed by extensive testing and qualification processes. These solutions are superior compared to the discrete solutions, both electrically and thermally, leading to a better overall system performance. The animation on this slide visualizes the benefits of using micromodule DC-DC regulators compared to the discrete solution. So are there any restrictions we need to keep in mind here? Yes, there is. The components on the top side of the PCB can reach a few centimeters in height, but industry in the standard practice limits the component height on the bottom side of the PCB than 2.3 millimeters. For that reason, the bottom side of the typical system board is often left unused, while the top side of the boards is extremely used to place FPGAs, ASIC, microprocessor, transceivers, connectors, or memory ICs, and also DC-DC regulators. Increasingly, the physical space on the PCB boards comes in premium, and it becomes trivial to use the back side of the PCBs to place some of the components that are usually placed on the top side of the PCB boards. So what are the specific benefits of the ultra-thin micromodule regulator? Our ultra-thin micromodule regulators can meet the height restriction on the bottom side of the PCB boards, as uh, mentioned in the previous slide. Therefore, moving these micromodule point of load regulators from top side of the PCB boards to the bottom side of it frees up a considerable real estate on the top side of the PCB boards, which can be used to add more value-added ICs like FPGAs or memory ICs or other features, or simply can lead to a reduction in the PCB size. The other benefit of the ultra-thin micromodule regulator is that they have a similar high-power digital ICs and can share a common heat sink or liquid cold plate with these high-power ICs to dissipate the heat created by those ICs. 
this saves valuable unused PCB real estate due to the imposed height restriction by the heat sinks or cold plate used by this high power digital ICs. So what kind of micro module options does analog devices offer? Our ultra thin micro module LTM A4663 with 1.5 amps output current and 1.3 millimeter height, and also LTM 4691 with dual 2 amps output current and the height of 1.80 millimeters, they meet the height restriction of 1.4 millimeter required by the QSF key optical transceiver applications. So tell me about that first one, the LTM4663. What kind of specifications are we talking about for this solution? So the LTM4663 is a complete 1.5 amp micromodule thermoelectric coupler regulator in a tiny 3.5 millimeter by 4 millimeters and the height of 1.3 millimeter in LGA package. Operating over an input voltage range of 2.7 volt to 5.5 volt, the LTM4663 supports a 1.5 amp continuous sink or source current capability. We need only input and output capacitors on the outside of the package. The package has the TEC controller, linear power stage, switching regulator, and inductor, and all supporting components inside the package. So what about the LTM4686 regulator? Can we talk about that one as well? Yes, absolutely. The 4686 is an ultra thin dual 10 amp micro module regulator with digital power system management. The input voltage ranges from 4.5 volt to 17 volt standalone and from 2.375 volt to 17 volt if you use auxiliary 5 volt bias. The output voltage is from 0.5 to 3.6 volt. The micro module outputs can be parallel together to deliver 20 amps and only the input and output capacitors are needed. It features an I2C based PM bus interface for digital configurability and monitoring of the power supply. Module voltages, currents, and temperature are digitized by 16 bit Delta Sigma ADC making new data available every 90 milliseconds for this part. The LTM4686 supports focusing digitization of some parameters like output voltage and current for limited duration and making fresh read-back data available as quickly as 8 milliseconds. All these modules provide best-in-class performance for DCDC set point accuracy and telemetry read-back accuracy. So what about the LTM 4686B? That one is a dual 14 amp or single 28 amp solution, right? Yes, that is correct. The LTM 4686B is a dual 14 amp micromodule regulator with digital power system management. The input voltage range is lower. It's from 4.5 to 5.75 volt standalone, and it can go down to 2.375 volt if we use auxiliary 5 volt bias. It provides a telemetry readback with high accuracy, and for scaling off the output current, a few of LTM 4686B can be parallel to operate in multi-phase configuration to scale off the output current. So you also mentioned a quad micro module regulator as well, right? Uh, that's correct. It is a three amp ultra thin step micro module regulator with a wide input voltage range from four volt to 20 volt. And it can go again down to 2.375 volt if you use external bias. The output voltage is uh, from 0.6 to 3.3 volt. And it employs the current mode control method in its feedback loop for a fast transient response. And we also can parallel the output of these quad ultra thin regulator for higher output current. Having micromodule DC-DC regulators with multiple outputs lead to a considerably small size solutions and enhances the electrical and thermal performance of the DC-DC converters. 
All right. So what about the buck boost micromodule regulator? What kind of specs are we looking at for this one? So our bike bus is a one amp device with input voltage range from 2.6 to 5.5 volt. And the output voltage is from 1.8 volt to 5.5 volt. It has a small package of 4 by 3.5 millimeters and the height is 1.25 millimeters. It finds its applications in telecom, datacom, and industrial equipment, as well as in medical and industrial instruments. So how do these solutions compare? The main features of these ultra-T micromodule regulators are their height, and they can meet the height restrictions for various applications, and they can be placed on the bottom side of the PCBs. This is a selectable table for a complete selectable table of the products and also data sheets and demo boards and detail and technical information. You can visit our website. Excellent. Well, Jonas, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.